What's going on everybody? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this farmhouse side table. So we needed a new side table in the living room, and the house is farmhouse themed so I decided to run with that using 6 quarter knotty alder. To start off I cut the material for the top and the bottom shelves to length over at the miter saw. Then over at the table saw, I set my fence to 5 inches and ripped all the pieces to width. Anytime I'm doing a glue up, I always use biscuits. It really helps keep everything aligned, but I also mark all the pieces with numbers to keep track of where they go. Then I make marks every few inches to reference where the biscuit slot should be cut. I use a square to make sure the marks are all lined up with one another. Then with my biscuit joiner, I can cut all the slots. People ask me all the time if this Ryobi is a good biscuit joiner. To be honest, it's the only one I've ever owned, but it has served me well for years and for the price, it's probably pretty hard to beat. I'll put a link to it as well as all the other tools and items I use in this video in the description below for you guys to check out. Since I built my new assembly table, I like to keep it as clean as I can. So I use this roll of paper to lay out anytime I do a glue up. I also put painter's tape on my clamp rails to keep those clean. Once I had the shelves laid out in order referencing the marks that I had made earlier, I could start applying the glue and biscuits. When doing a glue up, it's important to clamp evenly and not over clamp, just tight enough to get a nice amount of squeeze out. I usually let the glue set for about five to 10 minutes and then I come back and scrape off the excess. The next day I came out and removed the shelves from the clamps. I started the flattening process by first scraping and glue off with a big scraper, and then moving on to a hand plane, which I have yet to perfect, but I'm working on it. Once the bulk of the material was removed, I could turn to sanding it with my orbital sander using 80 grit to get everything nice and flat. The pencil marks are just to keep track of where I sanded already. Works really well. Next I needed to address the knots and cracks in the shelf, so I taped off the bottom sides to prepare for some epoxy. I mixed up some low viscosity epoxy for moss to fill up these knots. If you guys are interested, I do have a 20% off coupon code for any moss product on their site. I'll leave that in the video description. I like the low viscosity because it runs down into the cracks really well. And I also use a syringe to control the flow and direction of the epoxy. After the epoxy was cured, I came back and sanded everything once again with 80 grit until it was all flush with the surface. When using epoxy, a lot of times you'll end up with these little pinholes. A quick way to fix them is with CA glue and accelerator spray. Basically, you just fill the hole, hit it with the spray, it's ready to sand in about 10 seconds, and then you just continue to do it until the holes are gone. I took the shelves over to the crosscut sled on my table saw to cut them to final size. Then I turned my attention to the legs, cutting them to length at the miter saw, and then taking them over to the table saw to rip them to width. I used the legs as a template to mark out on the shelves where I needed to cut 
so the legs could protrude through them. I used my miter gauge at the table saw to make these cuts, but if I did it again, I would probably just use the band saw. This way was a little bit sketchy and not the most accurate. After sanding, I could mark out on the legs where I wanted the holes to be for the screws and dowel plugs. I was just going to use pocket holes for this project, but I decided to try something a little bit different, and I thought maybe the dowel plugs of a different species of wood would give a nice contrast. Starting with a small bit, I pre-drilled all the holes. And then I switched over to my Craig jig bit, which is 3 8 and drilled down about 3 8 of an inch using tape for reference. After the pre-drilling was done, it was time for assembly. I used glue and screws to hold everything together. I glued in some 3 8 inch oak dowel plugs that I cut from a longer rod. I repeated this for all the holes. I held the bottom shelf up off the bench with some spacers to secure it at the proper level. Once the glue was dry, I could cut the plugs off with my flush trim saw. The tape is there to protect the wood from the saw. So I wanted to add a profile around the top and I decided to use a chamfer bit. I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Then it was time to move on to the X braces for the ends of this table. I cut some pieces that were about an inch by an inch and a quarter, held them up and marked the angle that I needed to cut set my miter saw at the proper angle and made the cuts. Once I had both pieces fitting, I made the marks where they overlapped to cut away half of the material for each one. This will create a half lap joint. I set the depth stop on my miter saw to cut away the material between the marks. This was my first time using the miter saw for this kind of joint and sneaking up on my marks, it actually worked really good. I used some scraps to line up the X's where I wanted them, glued and clamped them in place. Once the glue was dry, I removed all the clamps and sanded all the joints flush and gave everything a nice sanding up to 180 grit. All that was left to do was add the finish. I used Rubio Monocoat Pure on here. It's one of my go-to finishes for sure. Super easy to apply and you only need one coat. It's also the reason I only sanded up to 180 grit because that's the optimum level where it will bond with the wood fibers and give you a really nice protective finish.
If you guys like this build, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do, I'd really appreciate it. And leave me a comment below with any ideas for future videos you would like to see me do. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one.